Good evening and welcome to the programme. Nearly half of London's roads will still have illegal levels of pollution in 2020. That's according to research by the Green Party, mm -hmm. who are calling on the mayor to radically change his policies. The capital is facing multi-million pound fines under EU air quality laws because of its dangerously high levels of pollution. The mayor's office said today that it's working to tackle the problem and has already seen some success. Our political editor, Tim Donovan, is on the Euston Road now with more. Tim. Riz, it's uh, pretty well accepted. Uh, it doesn't appear to be a, a challenge claim uh, nowadays that 4,000 people or so die prematurely each year in London uh, because of the effects of air pollution. Now, the Greens have done some new work, some new analysis, uh, predicting forward to the, uh, the next decade. And they say the mayor needs to show some leadership. Pollution levels in London vividly laid bare, mapped digitally by teams from UCL and King's College. The red area showing where pollution peaks in the capital. Now a new analysis is predicting there'll be little improvement into the next decade. The Greens say that in 2020, levels of nitrogen dioxide will exceed legal limits on 45% of the capital's main roads. 400 bus stops in Barnet would be affected, they claim. 55 schools in Wandsworth would be close to roads where there's harmful pollution. Nearly half of London's roads will still be illegal what? by EU standards. Illegal. That means every Londoner is, breathed, is breathing in dirty air. It's bad for asthma, it's bad for people with heart conditions, it's really bad for children whose lungs don't develop properly here in London because of the dirty air. It's bad for Londoners. He can't just stop people driving or heating their homes, he said today. But the mayor says he's imposed an age limit on working taxis, bringing in a fleet of low-emission buses, and has been supporting a programme of retrofitting homes with insulation. If you look at the numbers, uh, NOx emissions, uh, which are the particularly uh, nasty stuff, uh, have come down by 20% uh, in London uh, since, uh, I, I believe, since I've been, I've been mayor. This expert says air pollution is the biggest public health risk after smoking, and he says the mayor could do three things now. We need to catch up with Berlin, ban the oldest diesel vehicles by 2015. They did it three and a half years ago. Second, give taxi drivers choice so they're not forced to buy one or other of two diesel vehicles currently. And we need to be fitting thousands of buses, not hundreds, with filters which clean up carcinogenic diesel exhaust. There is a promise of an ultra-low emission zone for vehicles after 2020, but the mayor's critics say that's too little, too late. Now, uh, London is uh, by, uh, by no means alone. Uh, a lot of European cities are facing uh, similar problems. Uh, there is a, a problem increasingly with the number of diesel vehicles in London, as there is elsewhere. Uh, many campaigners feel that while we've heard for some time now about the potential threat of EU fines, they haven't yet uh, uh, materialised, and perhaps it's going to take that to make you know, London's mayor, like indeed the mayors of other cities, uh, it's going to take that imminent threat to concentrate the minds and see the kind of changes, particularly kind of to traffic, congestion, which may bring the improvements in air pollution that campaigners want. Tim, thank you. Tim Donovan there.